according to consultancy group Accenture. Despite short-term volatility, strong long-term demand is likely for mining commodities owing to increasing urbanization and consumption. Accenture's new research document called Achieving High Performance for Mining in 2020 offers what it regards as winning strategies for companies in the sector. Duncan Sloan is Senior Executive for Chemicals and Natural Resources at Accenture South Africa. He joins us in studio. Hello, Duncan. Good evening, Erica. So you've, you've looked rather deeply at mining and obviously it's rather topical. We've been talking about the uncertainty, the, the future for China and what that means for demand for commodities. So you said this is a short term phenomenon. We need to look long term. Absolutely. So <coughs> our perspective for the industry actually is very positive looking to 2020. Our view is that the fundamentals are in place. Um, we still see a lot of scope for um, increased urbanization and infrastructure spending. First of all, in China, I think there's been a lot of focus on the eastern seaboard. Um, if you look to the west of the country, to the inland provinces, there's still a huge um, drive to urbanize as well as there's a a significant um, industrial revolution happening in China. So we see lots of scope for the mining industry longer term. Um, and then I think we can look at an infrastructure backlog in places like India, um, obviously Africa itself, um, if we look even longer term beyond 2020. It's a little difficult for stock investors. Many, many investors are indeed long term investors, but it's, it's nerve wracking to, to watch those vagaries in the short term and, and hold on tight. And I think that's the reason why with commodity companies are particularly you really have to pick the low cost producers because those, those folks will produce at, at much lower than the marginal cost of production. And so if commodity prices come off, it's the marginal guys who get knocked out. And the you know, big, uh, most efficient guys stay on and they can gain market share into this uh, demand. Yes. Duncan, you nodding at that. Presumably, these are one of the challenges for, for miners to keep those costs uh, under control. We think of the South African miners at uh, platinum and gold, where it's pretty deep level, it becomes expensive and dangerous, etc. Absolutely. So, um, our research is focused on how do mining companies actually drive to um, lowest cost. And one of the key issues is that the industry is plagued by a lot of fixed cost. And so, one of the things that we see as the key to success is, is how to drive more cost to a flexible, more agile model. And so a lot of things that we see um, in terms of what we see the best mining companies in the world doing is trying to create more elasticity of their business, which is doing things, for example, like smart sourcing. In other words, shifting some of the risk of the commodity cycle onto business partners, onto people who provide services, even eventually um, to some of their employees in terms of, for example, things like how they construct variable pay contracts, so looking at every aspect of their business and thinking, how do we get more agile um, and how do we shift and share some of the risk of the commodity cycle and the volatility with its partners? Duncan, I have to pull your leg. leg. That sounds mm. like consultancy speak. Okay, no <laughs> but, problem. But in there, am I also hearing mechanization, more of that? So one of the things that we see mining companies doing is using digital technology, um, using various types of automation. I think it does depend on the region, the geography. I think it's all very well for Australian mining companies to build highly automated mining systems um, effectively in the Pilbara, a desert. Uh, whereas we look at uh, more populated continents and areas like, like Africa, and I think that there has to be different solutions. Mm -hmm. But certainly in terms of deep level mining, um, a lot of the mining companies are placing significant investments, which are longer term investments in terms of automation. Yeah. Duncan, when you take the, the, the gold industry in particular, but also including the platinum industry, the ore's just not in the ground. There's very little gold left and it's very deep. And platinum, you can argue, a lot of the production now is in fact marginal. Is there an answer that management can do for these two industries to try and, at the very least, extend the life of the mine? Because obviously these are very important sectors in our economy. I think that, um, I mean, many people have been looking at the gold industry for a silver bullet, a step change for many, many years. I think that um, it's probably unrealistic to expect a step change in really a matter of a year or two. I think that many of the investments are really around making many small incremental improvements. Um, for example, there's many opportunities to utilize, for example, automation underground. Um, I still think it doesn't solve the fundamental problem of depth, but uh, there are a number of companies, for example, in South Africa who have got deep level mining projects, um, which are looking at completely different ways of breaking rock. Um, completely different ways and changing the mindset in terms of how you mine. Those are yet to be proven, but I think that there's some promising signs that there may be some breakthroughs, um, but I don't think that's going to happen overnight. 
Lynn, I'm sure it all comes back to price, but if you, if you as an investor look at what's available on the stock market, and, and these are deep, uh, long-lasting difficulties that you're also describing. Yes, the opportunities, but cost issues. And then one thinks of the environmental issues, which I think are far bigger in, in the sector, access to land, access to water, etc. Surely it's going to be an easier bet to go for a bank or a telco. I think, well, I wouldn't say bank, because banks are extremely dangerous things. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot. But <laughs> perhaps a telco. Um, but having said that, you know, I, th I think with mining, um, you need to have a company that has not only a track record but institutional memory of dealing with the environment well, dealing with governments well, dealing with industrial labor well. Because as commodity prices uh, prove to be a source of wealth for these companies, all stakeholders want in on this. And there are some stakeholders that could be more reasonable than the others. What's fascinating to me is how, I think five, six years ago, Built made, made the decision to reduce its, its exposure to South Africa. Because the conversation here is difficult. I'm not saying one party is right or wrong, but the conversation is extremely difficult. So Built is in geographies where it, it best manages these things better than any other company. Duncan, if you could put it all together, perhaps with a comment on, if you look at the big, presumably it's the big ones in South Africa, who's doing it right and what are they doing right? I think if we look at um, what's the key success, obviously it's being in the right commodities. And I think that um, to give some advice to people, you need to look at, um, particularly at the moment, and I think for the next five years, it'll certainly be a China story, pick those companies that are um, providing um, commodities into China where jet Chinese domestic co um, consumption exceeds their own supply. China is obviously the largest producer of many commodities in the world a fact that's often forgotten. So if you find the sweet spot whereby you're supplying into the Chinese market requirements that they can't meet themselves, um, certainly I think that uh, that's a sweet spot. I think in terms of commodities, um, com mining companies have to uh, manage a portfolio as well as they have to manage a portfolio of operations in terms of geographies as well as um, in terms of their own projects. So not one single item in terms of keys to success. I think um, the top five large diversified miners are doing very well. Um, I think that they have to ride out the current downturn um, and put in place many of the things that we've been talking about to be able to be long-term successful. Duncan, I don't know if there's a quick answer because we've run out of time, mm. but right at the beginning you said it's about choosing the right commodity. What would that be? Mm -hmm. um, difficult one. I think that uh, iron ore still got some place to run. And re the reason that I say that is because of the infrastructure backlog. Um, and although the steel industry is quite depressed, I think that there's still a lot of opportunity for iron ore and perhaps copper as well.